Let's look at this example of world population growth between 1700 and 2019. Now, this graph also includes projection into the future until 2100, but I'm going to ignore that part in this example. So, if you look at this curve of population growth, it looks sort of exponential. And, of course, population growth is a typical example given when we talk about exponential growth. But, interestingly, if you look at this purple graph right here, it shows the annual growth rate of the world population. So, in other words, what was the percentage that the population grew that particular year? And, as you can see, it was never constant. So, if the population growth was purely exponential, the annual growth rate should stay constant. But, as you see in this graph, it, it was changing all the time. So, for example, the peak growth was in 1968 at about 2%. In 2019, it was about 1%. Around 1900, it was close to a half percent per year. And if you go all the way back to 1700, it looks about somewhere between 0.2 and 0.3%. Now, what this means is that, for example, if we look at the population in the year 1901, it was equal to population in 1900 times 1.005, approximately, right? Which corresponds to half a percent growth. And if you look at the population at 1969, it would be a population at 1968 times 1.021, right? Which corresponds to 2.1%. And the population in 2020 would be the population in 2019 times 1.0108, which is about 1%. And so you see, the growth looks like exponential, so we multiply by some growth factor every year, but that growth factor is changing year by year. So, the general formula here would be that the population at the year t plus 1 is equal to the population at the year t times the growth factor a, which itself depends on that year t. So, the question is, how is this related to exponential functions or logarithmic functions? Now, notice that the annual growth rate was relatively small. It was never more than 2%, but often it was close to 1% or even half a percent. And what is interesting is that, for example, if you take this growth rate of half a percent, so write it as 1 plus 0 0.005, so around 1900, Actually, this is pretty close to e to the power 0 0.005. And the same thing if you look at, for example, uh, 2019, if you write 1 plus 0 0.0108, this is very similar to writing e to the power 0 0.0108. So, in terms of our exponential terminology, we can say that when the growth rate or continuous growth rate are pretty small, then they are actually close to each other. Or, to put it more mathematically or in mathematical notation, we can say that 1 plus x is approximately equal to e to the x when x is small. Now, of course, you might know this already, and we will discuss this when we talk about derivatives. But, if you simply look at the graph of these functions, so, for example, here on GeoGebra, if you graph the exponential between minus 2% and 2%, and then you graph this function 1 plus x, you can see that they are very, very close. You know, we often say that if you look at a smooth function, when you zoom in, it looks like a linear function. So, if you zoom in on exponential 
near zero, it looks like this linear function 1 plus x. And so for relatively small growth rates, we can also rewrite this as the population at year t times e to a continuous growth rate for that particular year. Or more precisely, the growth rate for that particular year can also be viewed as essentially a continuous growth rate because it's pretty small. Now, of course, if you want to calculate the annual growth rate in any given year directly, it's easy to do. Right? So if you, for example, want to calculate this growth rate in the year 1968, you can simply take the population in 1969 divided by the population in 1968, and that will give you 1 plus the growth rate. So actually, if you subtract 1, you will get your growth rate. So in that particular case, it was 2.1%. But if you look at that formula in the form of continuous growth rate, you can calculate that continuous growth rate by taking the logarithm. So if you take the natural logarithm of this ratio, which will be simply the difference of natural logarithms, you will get this k of 1968, which plays the role of the continuous growth rate in that particular year. And again, because it's small, it would also be approximately equal to that 0 0.021. Now you can ask at this point, why do we need this continuous growth rate representation if we can just easily find the growth rate? And the reason for that is because Let's say you want to calculate the population in 1968, starting from the population in 1900. Then every year you have to multiply by your growth factor, which can be written as e to the k, starting from 1900. Then in the next year it will be 1901, but because product of exponential is exponential of the sum, this just results in adding this k in the exponential. And then the next year you can add the k in 1902 and so on up to 1967. So in this representation, if you start at some particular year, you can compute the population in any given year just by conveniently adding up these continuous growth rate constants for every year. And in fact, in many sciences, we also want to consider processes where this continuous rate is also constantly changing or constantly. Well, here I'm jumping a little bit ahead, but what we'll see is that when we talk about this type of processes, we can write the population at time t as population at time 0, and in this exponential, the sum will be eventually replaced by integral. So this will be integral from 0 to t of some function k of s ds, where this k of s will represent exactly this continuously changing continuous rate. And in these types of exponential growth processes, with continuously changing continuous rate, to find this rate you would have to take a logarithm first. So if you take a logarithm of both sides, you can rewrite this equation in this form. And then again, you'll have to wait until we talk about integrals and fundamental theorem of calculus. If you take the derivative of both sides, you will actually get this continuous growth rate k of t. And so I wanted to give this example to show that even such a classical exponential growth process as a population growth is not always purely exponential. And it can also have a changing growth rate or changing continuous growth rate. And in many of these examples, a really interesting and illuminating information 
is really in this growth rate or continuous growth rate. 